What's up, people? Supreme Decisions here, and today I want to come to you with a video that I want to use this one as a teaching moment because I found it humorous. <laughs> and I'm going to do this one kind of as a reaction video because I'm going to watch a little bit with you, and then I'm going to stop it. So I'm going to put a link to the original video in the description, so look for that. If you want to watch the video in its entirety, it's a good video. It's maybe about eight minutes long. But before we get into that, again, today's episode is brought to you by Cash App. There's a link in the description for you to sign up. It is my link. You donate five bucks or more to this channel, Cash App will send you five dollars. Use my link. Sign up for Cash App. Quickest way to send money and receive money in the industry and sometimes it's free plus you get a lot of perks and bonuses now on to this video this video was shot by an auditor he was actually at work and not really auditing but in this video he has an officer that go grab a book i guess to annotate it code to where he was going to recite some law to him to prove that he had to give him ID. Now, here's where it gets fun for me. I get to dissect this video. So, here it goes. It go. It, it's somewhere. All right, are you ready for this? Yes, we are. In Arizona versus Johnson, 555 U.S. 232, 2009, the Supreme Court held that during a lawful traffic stop, all passengers are seized from the moment of the car and stopped by the police. The court stated that the temporary seizure of the driver and passengers ordinarily continues and remains reasonable for the duration of the stop. The court also found that during a traffic stop, passengers are not free to uh, terminate their encounter with police and cannot leave the scene of the traffic stop. It is up to the discretion of the officer to allow any passengers to remain in the car and allow them to get out of the car. Otherwise, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> However, also advisors. Now, I'm going to stop this real quick because he said a couple of things that most people don't pick up on. Because they kind of skim over the fact that they say the stop has to be lawful, which means they have to have probable cause, which comes from a crime not an infraction because lawfulness only comes from a crime not infractions now don't believe me look at Delaware v. Prowse because Delaware v. Prowse says this the United States Supreme Court held that police may not stop motorists without any probable cause to suspect crime or illegal activity to check their driver's license and auto registration. Delaware v. Prowse, 440 U.S. 648-1979. Also has Wren v. United States, which was upheld by People v. Venezuela, 1999 in the California Appellate Court. When the pretext used for making a stop to conduct an administrative search, such as the inspecting of a licensing of a taxi cab per local ordinance or inventory vehicle search making a traffic stop is unlawful and any direct product of that stop is subject to suppression lastly united states versus lopez soto united states versus morales an officer making a traffic stop based on a misapprehension of the law even if reasonable is an illegal stop that is why the words officer discretion is placed in that pretext because it's up to the officer to continue the unlawful or unconstitutional act that they are participating in because again the continuation of these acts are a show of willful intention these are things that violate their oath of office these are things that relieve them of their qualified immunity, willful acts, or 
ignorance. Keep those two in mind. Let's finish this off real quick before I get really into it. Ah, oh, there we go. Harry stop. And he just said, Terry, stop. Terry, the Ohio. Are you recording me right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you ask my permission to record me? I, uh, I don't need to. The Supreme Court has ruled that we have the right to record. Now, here's the greatest part about what just happened. He cannot finish Arizona v. Johnson because Arizona v. Johnson, the pretext, is not the driver. He is 100% correct when he talks about the understanding of that case is about how you treat the passengers in a traffic stop. It is about the pat down. So keep that in mind. It is not about the driver. It is about the treatment of the passengers in a traffic stop. And remember, Terry v. Ohio, everyone is seized once the car is stopped. What happens is, it's officer discretion on what he does with the passengers. But the passengers have to exhibit continuous, dangerous behavior, and the officer must be able to articulate that continued danger by asking them to either get out the vehicle because evidence may be destroyed. You know why? Because of the probable cause that they have to stop. So the evidence of the crime may be a part of the vehicle to which they're trying to preserve that evidence. If not, keep that in mind, if not, it is unlawful. So now, even when governing a pat down, Terry v. Ohio, if a police officer additionally has reasonable suspicion that a person so detained is armed and dangerous, they may frisk the person for weapons, but not contraband like drugs. Because they must then be able to articulate the dangerous area and be able to point to it in order to frisk it. If they are not able to do that, they need consent or a judge's permission because they have probable cause for a warrant, not officer safety. Officer safety is bullshit because it is secondary when they became an officer. Their life became secondary to the life of the citizen. Those are not my words. Those are the procedures set forth by the Supreme Court of the United States of America and the Constitution of the United States of America. These are things they knew going into applying to become an officer. That's where I'm stopping this video at because, again, He's not going into it because he can't, because it does not go along with his narrative. Now, I am going to go into what he was trying to get to. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to go into what he was trying to get to. But again, this also does not fit his narrative. Why? Because police procedure is dictated through high bill versus Nevada, 2004. Laws requiring suspects to identify themselves during investigative stops by law enforcement do not violate the Fourth Amendment and do not necessarily violate the Fifth Amendment. Statutes requiring suspects to disclose their name during police investigations do not violate the Fourth Amendment if, remember that huge word I talked about, if, and, or, Here's if, if the statute first required reasonable and, that's another one of those words, articulable suspicion 
of criminal activity. Damage to person, damage to property. Corpus delecti. Shira V. McCullen has to be a complaining witness. Has to be an injured party. I constantly say those things. Why? Because every Supreme Court case goes back to that. This is why I bring this up. Because they will try any and everything to manipulate and generate revenue. Because that's what it is. When you talk about traffic and state statutes, codes, and ordinances, 90% of them are for revenue generation, not crime control. So when you're talking about crime control, it does not fit their narrative. When you're talking about revenue generation, they're hoping you're too stupid to understand what they're doing is wrong. That is why you look at 67% of all people released from jail, death row, that have been exonerated, are done because of police error. They're not taught to investigate. They're taught to generate revenue. You have to know your rights. And when you become 18, they expect you to know them. Now they are moving that limit down even further. So you have to teach this and impress upon your children these because they will take advantage of them because they do not have your child's best interest at heart. Keep that in mind. This is one of those videos I wanted to use just as a look upon even a narrative to go on and show you these are the things that are being taught. These are the things that are being exploited these are the things that are being impressed upon us. We have to be ready for those things, and this is how we get ready. We understand their procedures, and this allowed us to get a little deeper than I normally go into it, because now not only do we see it, we see they can't even combat it when it is presented in its proper place. So remember, hit that cash app, the link in the description. Donate $5 or more to your boy, let me be your first and cash out and hit you with five bucks back. So until next time.